Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is a tutorial on how to create the individual parts and assemble the parts for the radial engine assembly. All the images are linked in the description below. It is also recommended that you print and have a hard copy of all the figures listed in the description below just to help you the viewer understand uh, where the dimensions are coming from and to have a better overall feel for the part that you are creating. And also for this tutorial we recommend that you constrain most of the parts, not all, uh, but most of the parts to the origin just to simplify the uh, creating an assembly process. Normally this would not be the case, but for this assembly uh, it'll be recommended. Alright, this is the master rod. As you can see it has two planes of symmetry, so all we really need to do is model one quarter of the part. Going into a new part and entering your sketcher on the YZ plane. I'm going to start by locating the 10 millimeter holes. I'm going to do this using uh, construction elements. So I'm going to make a line here, linear construction element, and, t and uh, type in the coordinates. First hole is at 29.39 and this is using the center of the large hole as the uh, origin. And the second point here is going to be at 16.43. So I'm going to move these out of the way just to show you that's what I did. Now I'm going to start making the outer shape of the flange using circles that are going to be co-centric with those points I just found. I want them to be standard elements, so I'll shut off the construction elements icon. And they have 13 millimeter radius. Now I'm going to begin linking these with three-point arcs. Three-point arc is located under the circle icon. So I made a three-point arc that begins and terminates at a, each of the circles. It has a 72 millimeter radius. And as you can see I've gone through and made the arc tangent with both the circles. I'll add one more three-point arc here, also 72 millimeter radius. And also tangent to the circle. And I want to make this endpoint co coincident with the H axis, the main axis of the part. That way that half arc I made will be symmetric about the main axis. Now I need one more three-point arc and I know that it's going to terminate at a point that's 13 millimeters off of that main axis. So I'm going to make another construction line with a 13 millimeter length. And I'm going to link that point I made with the circle using a, another three-point arc. Again, I'm going to tab over and put in the radius of 72 and make it tangent. Now I'm going to go and make the straight edge. It's going to make a line out any distance. It doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to make the circle that's at the far slender end of the rod. That's got a 35 millimeter diameter. And I'm going to link the end of that straight line in the circle with another three point arc with a 35 millimeter radius. And I'm going to make that arc tangent to both the circle and the line. Now I'm going to go and make the main 
access the symmetry using a line and connecting the open point and the farther, farthest most point of the circle. Then I'm going to use the quick trim tool and remove all the extraneous pieces of the profile. Now I just need a few more constraints. I know that the point here at the end of the straight line is a distance of nine millimeters from the axis and that the center to center dimension for the holes is 250 millimeters. So I'll make a constraint of 250 there and then the profile is done. I'm going to exit Sketcher and go into Pad and pad this to 21 millimeters, which is the distance from the central axis to the top of the flange. Now entering a new sketch on the bottom of the pad we just made. I'm going to start by making a circle with a 63 millimeter diameter, concentric with the origin. And then I'm going to make an outline of the material that I want to remove. Doesn't particularly matter as where I put these lines as long as it's on the outside of the material I want to remove. Now actually I didn't really want a straight line here. What I really wanted was a three-point arc. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that and replace it with a three-point arc. I'm going to put in a radius here for now, I'm just going to say 200 millimeters. And I want that arc to terminate at the end of the straight line. So I'm going to put a coincidence constraint there as well as another tangency constraint. And Katia didn't like that because I specified a radius, so I'll just actually get rid of that radius and let Katia figure it out. Put one more tangency constraint. And I don't like these lines just floating out in space, so I'm going to also put tangency constraints. Again, I'm just going to erase the extra pieces. And there is the outline of the material I want to remove. So I'm going to pocket that, pocket out 14 millimeters, leaving me with a 7 millimeter thick flange. Now I want to make the 10 millimeter holes. And I'm going to do up to next, even though you could do up to last, in this case it doesn't really matter. And you can see by clicking on the arc and then on the face, the hole is actually going to be concentric to that arc, so I don't need to constrain it at all. Now I'm going to go and mirror the current body across this face. Now we're getting closer to the shape of this main rod. Now I want to make a sketch on the main plane, main longitudinal plane, which is the YX plane in this case. I want to make a sketch of the material I want to remove. So I'm going to start by drawing a sketch of the material I want to remove. I'm just going to use three lines and another three-point arc. And from the drawing, the radius on that three-point arc is 78 millimeters. So I'll key that in. And now what I want to do is I want to make this point coincident with this point right down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the point coincident with this edge. And then also make it coincident with the edge that you see horizontally right there. I 
make this end and this end also coincident with the edges and make the line an arc tangent. Now from the drawing, again this is the figure 11-96 if you're following along. I know that this length is 12 and I can also tell that the end of that arc, that fillet, is going to be 13 millimeters. from the edge. So now I've got the sketch of the material I want to remove. I'll exit Sketcher and what I want to do is I'm going to pocket out mirrored extent and I'm just going to put some arbitrary distance, in this case 50 millimeters, just, just enough that I know that to remove all the material that I need it to. Now what I'm going to do is make a, another sketch here. What I want to do is make the cylindrical feature on the end, the slender end of the rod. And I'm going to start by making a circle that's coincident and co-centric with the outer portion of that end of the rod. And I want to pad that out 21 millimeters and I want to put a hole through that. And you see I clicked on the outside, that red circle first, and then I clicked on the hole button, and then I clicked on the surface. And again, that made it concentric. So all I need to specify is the diameter, which is 24 in this case, and up to last. Going back onto the face of the flange, making another sketch, this time a circle centered at the origin with a 63 millimeter diameter. I want to pad that out 14 millimeters. And then I'm going to make another hole. So I'll start by clicking the edge, then the hole button, then the face. Now I just need to specify the diameter, which is 52 and up to next, or up to last. And there we go, we're pretty close to being done with this half of the part. Last thing I need to do is add the elongated hole, or the channel that's cut out of the slender portion. I'm going to do that by making a sketch, again on the same face of the flange. And I'm going to type in the radius of six millimeters, and I know that the length from center to center of the the foci of the hole is 150. Now I know that from the center of that foci to the round hole, center of the round hole right there is 30 millimeters. So I'm going to quickly find the center of that hole just by making a uh, construction element of a circle and I'm going to make it co-centric with the inside edge of that hole. And that just allows me to quickly find the center of that hole so I can constrain to it and make that 30 millimeter constraint there. Now all that's left is I just need to pocket that, pocket 18 and a half millimeters, which is going to leave me two and a half millimeter thickness from the main plane. There we go, that's a completely model half part. The only remaining step is to click the mirror button and mirror the body across the bottom face. And there we go, we have the full master rod modeled and ready for assembly.